In this video, we are going to be talking about digital uh, rendering of basic shapes using Adobe Photoshop. So, um, this is a great practice exercise. Um, it can seem a little daunting as well as perhaps even a fair bit boring for those that that you know that have some experience. But it's it's definitely an exercise I recommend doing um, if you've never done before to kind of just do look up basic geometric shapes and try to paint and render them using uh, all the aspects of light and core shadows and you know and you know the dark side and try to try to kind of mimic a, a, a sphere or a cube or a cone or a cylinder or some basic shape in in the in the real world so I'm gonna first go ahead and start with a sphere here and create one and there's a lot of different ways to do this so I'm gonna show you the way I would handle this um, just for an introductory uh, painter here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Uh, the quick key again is Control Shift N. There we go. Control Shift N. Create a new layer. And I already had a default background page here, which I'm just going to leave alone for now. I might change that later. But I created a new layer. This is an 8.5 by 11 uh, default size print. Nothing, nothing fancy here. And I tend to work in layers heavily, just and then if I like something, I commit it to, to you know, commit down. So I, I'll tend to expand on my layers as I go. Um, so uh, obviously you can come in here and just use the prank brush tool, the B key, and just start painting the circle if you want. Um, and that's perfectly fine if you want a looser thing. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use the marquee tool. Right now my current marquee is a square. I'm going to change this to a circle. And again, you can change by the, via quickie here by hitting Shift M. Because M is the, the, the quick key for marquee. Shift M lets you toggle between the two. Shift M. And you know there's a circle. And I'm going to hold down Alt as I drag. So I drag from the center. And I'm going to also hold down Shift to make a perfect circle. So I'm just making a marquee circle. And put it in there. Technically we could fill any color on how I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to swap my color to white. And I'm going to fill that. So you won't technically see anything, but I'll go ahead and you'll fill it anyway. So X is to swap back and forth between your colors over here on the, on the bottom left. Fill command is, uh, there's lots of different uh, quick keys for fill command. I use shift backspace, which brings up a fill dialog. Be sure you're on the foreground color or whatever color where your white is. And I'm going to hit fill and hit OK. And again, you won't see anything because it's white on white but it's there if you look in the layer thumbnail it is filled white now what why am I doing this is because this allows me to use this as a mask an area as a clipping mask to be messy with my painting um, that's the only reason I'm, I'm doing it this way for the sphere because I mean it's gonna be a lot easier I think to go ahead and do it like that so what I can do is I can create a new layer above this and I can do all my painting on that layer. So if I go back to black and white and just make the D key to revert this back, go to my brush tool, B, Bravo key. And then again, brackets make your brush bigger and smaller. And shift brackets make your brush harder or softer. So you can feather your brush or make it a harder brush. Again, this is all found right here if you click on this as well. But Brackets control the size, shift brackets control the hardness. And then you can also turn down the opacity by tapping your number keys. So uh, you can change it right there up in the slider. Again, I use these number keys. For example, 2 is 20%. Wait a little while, 4 is 40%. And if you hit any sort of numbers, rapid consecutive, like let's say 2 and 4, it'd be 24%. So the number is by default the 10%. If you get two numbers in quick concession, that'll do the, the tens as well as the ones percent on there. So I'm just going to hit two for two percent or twenty percent, and I'm just going to go ahead and just paint some random color on here. And you can see it's just painting, and it's just a blob of gray. And the reason this is, you know, like why, why are we doing this? Um, because what you can do is again, you can you can paint on this layer um, where I'm doing all my painting, and the layer below where I made this the circle, that's going to be the clipping mask. And this is a very powerful tool. Um, how I recommend 
that you do this. Uh, there's actually probably a way to do it in the menus, but I, just, I, I don't know it anymore. I always go through my quick keys. Um, how I do this is you you always put your paint whatever layer you're painting on above the clip directly above the clipping mask. So in this case, it's going to be directly above the circle. Then you hold down Alt and you cover over between the two layers. So I'm holding down Alt. And if you hover just right between the two layers, you'll see it turns into a little square icon with an arrow pointing down. That is saying I'm going to use the layer below it for a clipping mask. And if I click this, what's going to happen is this gray blob that I painted here will only show up if there's pixels on the layer below it for it to land on. So I'm going to click, boom, you'll see it indent over. And you'll see that the gray now only shows up. It's still there. In fact, if I release the mask, I'll talk about that in a second, it comes back. So the pixels aren't gone. They're just only showing up if there is something for the pixels to drop on in the layer below it. To release a mask, it's the same way. You, you create it, hold up Alt, and you click between the two layers, and you will release the mask. So Alt and clicking between, the, holding down Alt and clicking between the two layers creates as well as release clipping mask. So now what I can do is I can make really big feathered soft brushes, and this is what's the key here for this particular uh, object, and just really kind of go into town. Low, I'm going to do low opacity, hit 05 to drop to 5%. And I'm going to paint this object, and again, big brushes really make this a lot easier. It's kind of it seems, you know, oh, I'm going to make a real small brush, and that's fine if you do that, but it's going to get really um, splotchy. It's going to get a little splotchy. So the bigger the brush, the lower the opacity, the tint it tends to um, just showcase that. So you can see I'm just kind of painting this in, and I'm going to imagine that there's going to be a highlight. A light's going to be up here from the top right as I paint this. So if you, um, and I'm not going to pull any things up, but I, I would suggest just Googling, uh, like, painting uh, shapes, and you'll probably find plenty of people that light show references with keys in there. I'm going to talk about it, I just I don't want to pull them up in this, for this video. Um, so you, But you can definitely find lots of reference, and I advise that you use it. So if I have the light up here in the top right area, we'll say, the light's going to come down, and it's going to hit this sphere, and I'm going to have a highlight on this top right side, then it's going to get darker. Now, what a lot of students will tend to do is they'll just make the whole other side really dark. For example, like this, they'll just start darkening the entire side, and that's not completely inaccurate, but what happens is if, if this object were at all on a ground, and I'm just going to make the assumptions that it is on the, a ground plane of some kind, is as the light comes down and hits, you know, passes through this, it's, yeah, it's going to get darker as it wraps around the form here, but if light hits the ground on the back side here, it's going to actually reflect and bounce back up, assuming the, the ground is lighter, lighter than the material, you know, light enough to do that. Um, and what's going to happen is technically it's going to be a little bit lighter underneath. So technically your darkest area, your what we call the core shadow, is going to be, I'm just, and I'm just speculating here, about three-fourths of the way down. So it's going to be through here is where the darkest area is going to be, right in, in that area right there. And it's actually going to get lighter again near the bottom of this, this sphere um, where the light will bounce back up and, and reflect just a little bit and add a little bit of lightness back in there. Now remember, when you're painting in here, um, yeah, you can go back, you can just tap the X key to go back and forth between X, uh, black and white, and if you want to paint with just black and white. But you can also sample colors while you're on the brush tool by holding down Alt and sampling a color, and this just changes your foreground color to whatever you click on. So if I just want to go to the gray, and paint some gray back in here, you can do that. If I want to darken this, you know, maybe Alt-Tap there, and you can see I can, you know, try to unify this color a little bit more, and paint there. Of course, you can always hit the D key to return this back to black and white, and use black and white. Um, if you're painting with black and white, though, you're going to, you're because you're painting with the extreme colors, your opacity is going to be much lower. If you paint sampling colors, you might be turning your, your opacity up because it's you know not as intense. It's too far. I went to 20% here. Maybe paint with a little 20% instead of 5. You can see I'm lightening that side up. So, and then after that, we're kind of just modeling this around. We kind of smooth it around. And there are more than one way to do this, of course. Um, I, I advise just you know using your brush because we're kind of practicing your brush here. Um, just, you know, paint and get this all the way you want and then maybe come back in switch to white here and kind of start 
adding a little bit of highlight. Oops, I should turn out my opacity. Zero 05, maybe. And then I'm just going to kind of paint this brighter and brighter. And I'm not really talking much about the material, but if you want more like a specular highlight, we, we could get really, really bright here. We can go up to 50, you know, get this thing a lot more bright right there. D key, I'm going back to black and white. I'm going to turn down my opacity. You'll do this a lot. Hit, hit the one key to go down to 10%. Maybe really push this a little bit more. I'll go to the extreme. And you can see we're really pushing that darker shape there. Let's like see, painting that shape, getting it out in here. All right. So you, we can paint this up as much as you want. Um, this is probably pretty good for a start. So uh, the, the aspects of, a, of the object is we have the, we have a highlight that's going to be cast from the direction of light. It's going to round out. We're going to get to the ref core shadow. And we're going to have the reflected light down here. Um, as well to bounce back, so it's going to get you know light, you know brightest at the top where it's getting hit, core shadow, darker side, but not as dark as the core shadow. Now I do recommend that when you do this painting exercise, you also add a, a ground plane. Um, so what I'm going to do, more tricks that we can do. Um, by no means that means the only thing we can do. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to make sure it's underneath the the the, the clipping mask. Control Shift N to create a new layer. And I'm just going to use the marquee. Now, again, we can come in here and just paint this. I mean, we can totally just paint the, the shadow. That would work. But just in case, to show you guys more tools, I'm going to use the marquee. Drag a little marquee down here. Something like that. And again, this is going to be shadows behind this layer. And yeah, I could come in here and just use the brush tool. Totally would work. Make the brush bigger. Um, and then paint the shadow out. But again, just for the art, for the case of showing new tools, I'm going to go ahead and hit the G key, the gradient tool. The G key, uh, the gradient tool, brings up the gradient. And by default, at least I think it's the default, it does background to foreground color, um, which is fine. In this case, it would work perfectly fine because my background is white. So I could run a gradient from here to here. Um, I personally don't use this one as much. I tend to do a lot of uh, whatever color to a transparent. So to change that, you have to click on this little downward chevron right here, and it's the second one. And this is foreground color to gray to to transparent. Again, whenever you see the the gray boxes in Photoshop, that means transparency. So what that means is now is when I start clicking and drawing with the gradient, it'll be black. And when I let go, it'll be transparent. The mix is between them. So the gradient is is pretty simple. You click one spot and drag. I'm holding down. And wherever I let go, this is, imagine this line as the gradient. So the larger this line is, the more of a gradient it will be, as such as like that. If I didn't, I'm undoing, Control Z. If I didn't go as far, for example, like this, the gradient distance is going to be very small. So again, where I first clicked is that first color, which is black. Where I let go is the second one. So since there's, this line is not as long, it's going to rapidly do a gradient back and forth. And I not, just noticed now that my gradient is set to um, bo uh, both sides. I default is this. So I did make a mistake there. So there we go. Try this again. So you can see black. There's the gradient where I was drawing the line. And the other side's transparent. So there's nothing there. So the longer that line is, the more gradual the gradient will be. You can see like that. I just hit Control D to undo my selection. So this gradient, it's 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 my my shadow's a little off. I'm gonna use the Control T transform tool to kind of now come in here and mess with this again. Control T is transform. Uh, it lets you grab the corners here. Maybe if you hold down Shift, you can distort this in this version. Older versions, it's the opposite. It always distorts, but you hold down Shift to keep it uh, uniformed. But in the most modern versions of Maya, it's, or sorry, Photoshop, it's the exact opposite. You hold down Shift to uh, deform it. So I'm just going to move this around, and it's a little off, but I'm going to leave it like this. I think I'm a, this should be over a little bit more to the left, but I kind of I kind of just like the look of that right now. So I'm just going to leave it so I can show you guys a little bit better. So the shadow can be manipulated with a transform tool, of course. Of course, I can come in here and paint it. Now, what I recommend with the shadow is um, you can. Keep it sharp at where it's closest to the, where the object meets.
but it should start getting more diffused, i.e. blurry, the farther away it gets. Now, there is a couple different ways of doing this. Again, there's a couple different ways of doing everything in Photoshop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the, the smudge tool right here. It's a little, little finger icon. If you don't see the smudge tool, it's probably under the blur tool. The blur tool is straightforward. I'll show that one too. Why not? Blur tool is pretty straightforward. It kind of just blurs it. It might be hard to tell on the screen. I can zoom in a little bit more so you guys can tell. Control plus to zoom in. Space bar. Holding on space bar to navigate through here. So it is working. You can see it. It, it, the blur tool will work. It's just, it's not, it, it takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and use the smudge tool. And what the smudge tool does is it's almost like if you were imagining this to be like a traditionally drawn medium and you were use your finger to smudge it, that's what it's, that's mimicking. Um, it has a strength capacity um, variable, which I think is, I think the default is 50%. And, and you can turn this up or down based on, on your needs. I'm going to turn it way up just to show what it's, you know, what it's doing. But if you turn it way up and do this, you can really get in there and smudge it. And that's not what I want in this case. Um, I'm just going to go back to default. I think the default 50. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of come in here. And I'm just going to go along these edges here and just very subtly move the mouse back. I'm clicking and then moving up and down. This will blur it much quicker. It's just really a really quick way of getting to that. So I'm just kind of blurring this as I go. You know. And it just blurs really, really fast. And then maybe I might come back over with the uh, the actual blur tool to kind of soften this up. So as the, the shadow gets more and more towards the, the 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 area, it will get sharper. Granted, I don't think it's ever this CG sharp, but um, you see I'm just doing some clicks. Now I'm not even bothering to move the mouse. I'm just clicking. And it's, it's smudging to just a tiny bit. So you might even hear my clicking here. And then maybe I'll go ahead and switch back to the, the blur tool and just kind of blur this whole thing out. And the great thing is, since we're working on different layers, I don't have to worry about hitting anything else. Granted, I do agree that this is too CG sharp. I'd probably blur this side too. Um, but, you know, this is you know more of an exercise and example. I maybe recommend a little bit on that to soften that edge. But don't do it till the very end until you're ready to be done. And and I think I'm, I like overall, I think it's a little too rough down here, but I think I'm going to go ahead and come erase this back because I think it's too much first. So I'll hit the E key. I'm going to turn down my opacity to I don't know, like 10%. Might even go lower. And I'm just going to feather the heck out of this brush, shift left bracket, and erase this whole thing a little bit, just a little bit. Undo, undo. So I'm just kind of reducing it back here. I think I'm going to come back with my blur tool. And the great thing, again, working on layers, I don't have to worry about hitting anything else. So I have my shadow there um, to do that. And if I want to, I have my, my, my mask, and I have my, my shape. If I want to come back in and say, you know what? Now that I see my shadow, maybe I want to push or lighten this up some more. Um, you know, we can. So we can totally... Um, keep all of this, you know, contained until we're saying, you know what, it's good, and you don't technically have to merge it. Um, and that's really more when you want to merge stuff together is really your call. Um, but let's say we were done with this. I want this shape to be completely complete. I know I'm not making changes. I can either put this in a group by selecting the layers and then you control G, create a group, and a group can be uh, minimized. It moved around now as a group, so I move a group B. Can move a whole group. I can transform the entire group. Control T for transform. I can do whatever. And if I wanted to say just merge them, merge them into a single layer, which would save memory, we can just select all of them. And in this case, I'm going to do the group as well and hit Control E, control Echo. That will merge them. This is more memory efficient, but it's also destructive, meaning you can't get back as easily. Uh, the other thing you can do with layers, I undid, went back to my layers. Um, the other thing you can also do is, like, I can see this is overall maybe a little too dark. I can come in here and maybe lower the opacity on my painted layer. Maybe tone this down some. Maybe it's too much. I tend to, I tend to paint a little heavy-handed. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll turn this, this down a little bit. And there you go. You can see it's painted out. Maybe I'll go up to 95% here. 
and you can see I have my my shape painted over here and I have a nice little group again if you want to rename anything in Photoshop I do recommend the farther you go that you start actually practicing file organization by renaming things you can double click on the words this is a little tricky in Photoshop it can't be the 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 the, the image uh, preview it can't be in the middle of this it has to be on the words if you double click a word you can rename this so I can name this to sphere for example just for the sake of continuing to show this, I'm going to double click this one and do, I don't know, do painting, I guess, for this. Maybe I'll do double click this one and hit mask. And I'll double click this one and hit shadow. Now, if you don't hit the word, you'll get something like this, which is uh, a layer style, which, again, that's a very powerful tool, but not going to be covered in this video. So if you see this, you just know that you, you can cancel this and you just got to be sure that you hit the words. So there is our first shape, the sphere. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, hopefully we'll come, come back with some follow-up lectures and do some other primitive shapes here. Um, until then, uh, keep on painting.